Hickok 45 here with a new Mosin. Yeah, I was in a gun shop today and they had two or three crates, you know, of them like you always see. So I thought I'd shoot it. What should we shoot? How about that? <laughs> How about something over there like a square red plate? All right. Sorry, Mr. Plate. Hit you pretty hard, didn't it? How about the, uh, what well, about the gong? What the heck? Make sure it knows what we have. And uh, to make sure we're ready and we're psyched, let's smoke a little pot. <laughs> uh, these pots keep trying to dive away and survive. Maybe. <laughs> uh, empty. What a beautiful rifle. It reminds me of my Seiko, doesn't it you? The Bavarian, the Model 85. Just a lot like it, right? Pretty funny, huh? Well, you know, I haven't had this thing out for a while and it just thought, wow, you know, I've got in the mood to shoot that. Uh, I haven't shot any Mosin in the Gaunt for a long time. Uh, you know, these were so, well, the 91, not necessarily. They've always been a little more rare. But the Mosins, uh, 9130s and everything, they were the rage several years back, weren't they? And there were crates full of them in gun shops all over the place. And you could buy them for what? 59, 89, 99, you know, dollars. And uh, so many surplus rifles have gone through that, that sequence, haven't they? Whether it's SKSs, uh, probably even AKs, but just so many rifles, surplus rifles, they're just everywhere. Uh, Mausers at one point, and you, you almost don't consider them worth. You could have consider them worthless almost. You know, you're in a gun shop and you've you've got maybe a few hundred dollars to spend. You don't want to waste on an old Mauser for fifty nine dollars or a Mosin for sixty nine dollars or something like that. You know, that's people buy that junk. It's hard to believe, right? Well, as time moves on. We learn, well, they're not going to be $89 forever, and they are historical, and they're nice rifles. Uh, we tend to pigeonhole people that are buying them almost in some ways. Is this maybe kids, young people, they're just getting into guns, they're all excited about because they're inexpensive and they're a pretty cool gun, you know, and it's almost like it's beneath us to spend our money on something like that. Well, they're historical and uh, they're actually pretty cool. As they get more expensive, you know, we, we give them a little more, uh, I don't know, uh, worth in our own minds, maybe. But anyway, this is the 90, it's chapter two. We we uh, brought it out years ago, wow, six, seven years ago, and uh, did a couple of videos with it, did a range two with it, and did a main video with it. I'll try to remember to link to them. And I thought, you know, I'd like to shoot that again. Let's just do a chapter two, reacquaint myself with it. And uh, <laughs> let's shoot some more. It was, it was trying to rain on us, so I want to get all the cool targets kilt just in case we get rained out plus if it sprinkles you know this old Mosin may not operate what do you think you think they're designed to work in bad weather yeah I think so so we might have a short chapter too but that's okay I'll take advantage of the time and the ammo I have I'll tell you what if it starts raining very much I will shoot that watermelon how's that I'll probably shoot it anyway. <laughs> Let's try that cinder block somebody put over there on that barrel. All right, look at that dust. Don't you love it? Yeah, that's nice. I, I, I really kind of like this. It might be my favorite Mosin because it, it shoots right on. Just to prove it, I'll shoot that long range two liter over there on the far left. See, that was a long way to hit a two liter. Like that one there too. <laughs> it's hard to miss with it. <laughs> uh, long barrel. So yeah, the 91 talked about in the first video, I'll link to it, but uh, you know, they've been around a long time. It's 91, 1891. This one was made in 1900. It's got the date right on it. And uh, this one, as I mentioned in the first video, ended up in Finland. And, you know, the Finns did some modifications to it. They, uh, now, some of them, they changed out the barrel to a heavier barrel, I understand. And then they changed the wood up here in some ways to make it. It, it look, kind of looks like that happened on this one. It's the thing that always strikes me as weird. Like, there's just something not right about it. You know, the way the uh, stock is and everything. 
Uh, but you know, this one, I don't think the barrel was changed out on, you know, get the original date and, and the markings, I think, uh, you know, the, the fins did do the marking on the side, as I pointed out, that uh, then they put the uh, slings, sw not swivels, put on it, and uh, they may have done some other things. The bolt is matching to the, to the receiver, so it's, it's a nice rifle, even though it has an odd look about it, it's an old gun. You know, when you're old, you might have an odd look about you, just like me, right? So, shoot some more of this, put a few more rounds in. Yeah, I was afraid we'd get rained out and wouldn't get any shots in. And y'all would have to leave, because I don't want you to get wet and get sick. You know, you'd blame me, right? Keeping you out here on the range, the ticks, the rain, mosquitoes, spiders, gunpowder, all the evils of the world. What am I doing here? Here we go. Trying to avoid rim lock. Rim lock. Sounds like something your doctor would diagnose. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, get that other two liter. I put a little white paint on that front sight. I'll tell you, this is a this is a sniper rifle. See that red plate on the right? I bet I can hit it. Oh, went past. I think I shot too high. Yeah. I need to hold uh, about six o'clock on them. I hit the one in the middle. Yeah, you notice how it swings. That's a heavy one too. Let's shoot. I think, well, let's take out this melon in case I don't get any more shots in. In case it starts pouring down rain. <laughs> That's one of the first melons of the year, I guess. Pretty nice. We'll load it one more time. Just a chapter two and uh, an opportunity for me to reacquaint myself with this uh, piece of history. Some of y'all know these better than I do. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess that's just the way it was made originally or if the Finns did some work on that. What do y'all think? I've seen others look a lot like it, uh, but I don't think this one's been rebarreled. Just looks like it would fit better. Part of it is that top piece of wood slides forward a little bit, and so does all of it, yeah. Because I, I pressed it back, yeah, there we go. And then moved this band back a little bit, but it just still seems like you design it that way. I don't know. So let's load it again. And uh, I ain't no gunsmith. I know just enough to be dangerous about these things. And uh, as I've said before, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. I enjoy most firearms, especially if they have any history associated with them. And uh, there are people who, who know them better than I do that study them in more depth, you know, like Ian, uh, those guys and others, uh, Athias, and I enjoy their videos. All right. All right. Let's shoot something like a, a bowling pin and see if it'll roll it. Yeah. I tell you, that long sight radius, uh, it, it's a nice sight picture. It really is. You feel like you can just hit anything. Yeah, famous last words. I can hit anything until I miss. It's hard. Let's see if we can put another one on that cinder block over there. <laughs> we might as well finish it off. All right, I are a sniper. One more bullet. Who wants it? Who wants it? Well, all I see, well, I see a paint can that's not working right, right there. All right, didn't miss on the last shot. I'm, uh, I'm happy with that, but uh, it is nice. Uh, so, nothing like a historical piece. Many of you think that's one of the ugliest firearms you've ever seen, and I might agree to some extent, but uh, ugly is as ugly does. Uh, function always wins out with me over uh, form, although I like form too. I like beautiful things, but uh, th these things work. Uh, uh, 
uh, most of the Mosins I'm not crazy about. Y'all know that. The the bolt and everything. I don't want to uh, dump you know lavish praise on something you know that I'm not uh, like exceedingly crazy about. Y'all know that. Uh, it's just interesting. You know, I hadn't fired one for a while, but you know they don't hold a candle to a Mauser for those that don't know. Uh, and some people know, and a lot of people I know back when these were selling like crazy, the regular 9130s or whatever was available, that, uh, well, if you say anything negative about a Mosin, you know, everybody, I don't know, uh, I don't want to criticize people under 25, but everybody that was young and, and had put a little money together, wow, I could buy a, a cool gun, you know, and, and it's only $89 or whatever they were. If you criticize them, uh, wow, people would come after you, you know. But uh, it's only in comparison. You know, with uh, the other bolt guns, the Lee Enfield, the Mauser, the Authory Springfield, some of those other, uh, a, a lot of them, most of them that were used during World War One, World War II, uh, just just had a better feel. Just had a better feel. But now this is nice. I think the fins kind of smoothed them up. They, uh, you know, they uh, they modified the stocks on on the, what the the 39s and even on these, I think, and so. Uh, added some things. Uh, the, the the fins tried to improve the Mosin, and they did. They did that model 39. Is it 39? Yeah, 39. Is considered a really fine rifle. With you know what they did, where they rebarreled, rebarreled them, and everything. So, uh, but anyway, this is the model 91. Goes back a ways, as I said, 1900. Uh, so you know, we'll be long before that's 100 years old. Uh, so you know, you got to. Cut it some slack. It's an old gun, but I'll tell you, I, there aren't many rifles I have that I feel like I could come out here just with iron sights and shoot better. You know, uh, the sights are right on. I don't know that I've even moved them. All I have to do is make sure that's all the way down, and uh, it's it's pretty much right on, just a tad high, uh, but not not really high, not off the target. Take about six o'clock hold, and you're going to hit what you're aiming at. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to Ballastol.com, TalonGunGrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.